Welcome everybody. My name is Tracy Childers and I am the co-founder and president of Wishlist Products. I'd like to welcome you today. Uh, you're in for a real treat and I have a special interview lined up with a great friend of mine. And I want to do a quick intro and this is Andrew Locke and Andrew is the owner of a site called helpmybusiness.com and through that site he has uh, helped thousands and thousands of uh, business owners and entrepreneurs just like yourselves uh, help them in their business and he does that through an online television show and we're going to hear a little bit about that he's also been the author of six business books and just an all-around generally very very nice guy so with that Andrew welcome to our <laughs> interview thanks Tracy yeah good to be with you um, I have to ask you what the one five two eight five is on the back oh. Oh, that is uh, the 15285 is my bib number, and that particular one was from the Chicago Marathon in 2002. It was the first, uh, first marathon that I ever oh, ran. Oh, so it's the, it's the wall of fame of. Yeah, marathon. it's the wall of fame. I've got uh, a few of them up there, you can see. So That's really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Andrew, I uh, mentioned already in, in the interview that you uh, are the owner of HelpMyBusiness.com. Uh, and so I know that you do some really cool things with that and I do I would love for you to share some of that with us but before we jump into that um, you and I go way back I, I think we're going on like nine or ten years and uh, you have a really really cool story on how you got involved in all this uh, really just <laughs> online businesses not it's not just online but uh, business entrepreneurship and running your own company and helping each other so would you share that with us yeah, sure. Um, I uh, I guess ever since I was at school, I was always into into a business, and uh, um, you know my teachers kept telling me, you know, you're going to be an entrepreneur when you grow up. <laughs> and uh, I remember one time actually, I got called into the headmaster, the the principal. Quick translation there, <laughs> uh, the principal's office, and um, I was thinking, you know, what have I done? I was like really nervous and uh, anyway I got in there and there was a couple of other kids sitting in there and um, he looks at me and he says um, you're going to receive an award for the best of the best uh, student in the year for business studies wow so, um, I you know I breathed a sigh of relief <laughs> uh, but uh, I guess you know that was that was a nice um, compliment to receive that and uh, you know, so my mind has always been entrepreneurial. And uh, uh, when I left school, I, I tried to hold a bunch of different things, different ways to, to make money and so on. I never really fit in as, a, as, a, as an employee. And, um, you know, always kind of work, was, I, I was an employee for a, a few years and I was constantly analyzing their business <laughs> and, you know, thinking, you know, why are they doing these stupid things? Anyway, not that I'm so smart, but it was just my mind just couldn't stop analyzing, you know, what they were doing in their business or with customer service or with marketing and so on, because I was always a student of those things. You know, I, I just devoured business and entrepreneurial books, uh, probably like you. And um, this was pre-internet. Um, but when the internet came along, you know, it really changed everything because it made a lot of things easier, certainly easier to reach people and also easier to learn too, because, um, it's, it was much more, uh, easier to access training and, 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 uh, courses and so on. And so, um, my first kind of really delving into that world of, uh, online business was when I found out about a, a seminar uh, the a guy named Yannick Silva, who I'm sure some people watching would know, yeah. um, was putting on. And this was way back in, I think, 2000. And, I mean, I say way back. Sound, I mean, in internet terms, it's a long time. <laughs> About 2004, I think, um, his first ever event. And uh, uh, I couldn't really afford to buy a ticket. So I, my, with my background as a camera operator, uh, which is my original kind of skill, I um, contacted him and I said, you know, could I trade my service as a camera operator, come, come to your event? And uh, to my surprise and delight, he said, yeah, that would work great because, you know, I really need someone to film it. So there I was, you know, in front of his event and uh, 
just this whole new world opened up to me of internet marketing and the cool things that you could do online. And uh, I guess the rest is history from there, you know. And one of the things that really struck me actually at that event, which I, which I really embraced and took on board, and it was new to me at that time, was the power of residual income through membership sites. And it had such a profound impact on me because my background in the entertainment industry meant that I was aware, very much in tune with the fact that I knew how recording artists and songwriters made their money through royalties. You know, you, you write a, a song, you continue to get paid over the years, over and over and over and over again, uh, for a song that's played on the radio or performed live and that kind of thing. So that the concept of royalties and residual income was, wasn't new, but I never thought that it would, there would be a way to apply it to myself. So that was a real light bulb moment. And, um, yeah, it just opened up this world of opportunities. And so from there, membership sites became a big part of, of my business, you know, ever since that time to the, to the extent where um, I have four now. I've actually sold a few over the years too that I've built. Um, so it is something that's very much uh, a part, a big part of what I do in my business. Wow, that's pretty interesting when you talk back about you know, going back all the way to 2004, right? Um, you know, it's just over 10 years right. or, or so in, in uh, internet terms. I mean, that's a, that's a long time. Yeah, it's and when you, when you say you were at that event and you were already recognizing it, that's pretty fascinating because a lot of people, uh, they still weren't talking about membership sites at all back then. No, in fact, I mean, I think that was one of the cool things about Yarnick's event and that's, you know, one of the reasons why I really came to respect him too was because um, not only was the event very cutting edge, he brought in people that were actually doing cool things online. Um, they weren't just teaching, you know, they weren't just like seminar speakers. They were people that were actually in the trenches doing these things. And, you know, combine that with Yannick's very um, ethical business um, methods and, you know, very, he's a very caring guy, uh, very genuine. And so, you know, I really resonated with what he was doing there. And uh, it, it was, it was the right event to go to. I mean, it really was. He, he was blazing a trail back then for sure. Yeah. I, I think I saw Yannick at my very first internet marketing event back in 2003 and I was just struck like, this is a sharp guy. Yeah. Hey, Andrew, I want to ask you about, um, you know, when you said that you uh, you you were that was very clever and creative, saying, "Hey, I can't afford uh, a ticket to your event because a lot of those <laughs> events, I mean, they were really high ticket, yeah, expensive. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes a thousand, two thousand right. dollars, just depending on the event. Yeah. Um, that was very clever and creative for you to come up with that idea. And one of the things that I've seen in uh, in my career is that a lot of people. Um, I don't know, they're, they're just willing to take no for an answer. And mm. you're kind of the complete opposite of that. Uh, how did you come, I mean, where did that come from? Well, um, I think it's just a case of, you know, the, the, the art of persistence. You know, it's something that I um, teach people, you know, it's a very important aspect. Uh, I do believe that most people give up too soon in, in any um, business endeavor. You know, most people are just, quick to throw in the towel but often the biggest breakthroughs come when you push through you know the 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 boundaries of what you think that you can do and uh, in that situation you know i i knew that i really wanted to be there i needed to be there i had to be there and so then you just have to start thinking creatively you know um what what do i have that I could offer him that may be useful to him. Um, you know, I think putting yourself in that position of how can I help someone is always a good thing uh, as, a, as a, you know, a prime or a first kind of point of contact. Uh, I get people pitching me all the time. I'm sure you do too <clears throat> with ideas and things that, you know, they want help with. And, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure that a lot of those ideas are great, but um, you know, there's, often a, a sort of an entitlement or an expectation that 
you know, you, you have all the hours in the day and that you'll just naturally do that. But um, I like to, to primarily think, how can I help this person, you know, as a first step? And, um, you know, if you do that, you, it's a much easier way to, to develop a relationship. And uh, I think it starts it off on the right footing. So, you know, for me, I was just thinking, what, what could I do for him that maybe, um, you know, some, a way that we could reciprocate so I think there's always something, you know, um, if maybe you're good at connecting people, maybe, maybe you have a contact that you could share with that person and say, you know, I think you two would go really well together because, you know, you have this skill and you have this. And, you know, I, I think there's a logical fit making introductions. That's a very easy thing. That doesn't cost you anything. Um, maybe, maybe you, you provide a service in your business that you could provide that service to someone. So, you know, there's all kinds of things, but I think, you know, just, just hustling basically and, you know, not just easily giving up or throwing the towel in, but, you know, if you really, really want something, you will find a way to make it work. That is a huge difference that you just uh, talked about. And I see it all the time. People, they 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 say, okay, I'm going to contact this person. And all it is about is uh, how how taking. that person yeah taking yeah. taking how can you help me or like i don't need to help you <laughs> right. what, do you, what do you want to do for me and that's how it gets people's attention so i love the way you frame that um you know you also said something andrew that you say you believe that uh people give up too soon yeah and uh, i want to take that a little bit further because from what i've seen is a lot of times uh not only do people give up too soon they they don't even get uh get things started. Mm -hmm. I think one of the favorite quotes I've ever um, heard, I think it was from Les Brown. It might've been from somewhere else, but it went kind of like, you don't have to be great to get going, but you have to get going to be great. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things from, from uh, our relationship over the last nine or 10 years or so, I've noticed that you're a massive uh, action taker. Uh, you, you know, a lot of people say what they're going to do, but you're on that flip side of it. You actually do what you say you're going to do. What? When did you get started doing it? Have you always been like that since you were a kid, or or what is the difference? Well, no, I mean, I appreciate you saying that. I think there's a number of factors. Um, I think to some extent, your background and uh, circumstances in life uh, play a part. And the reason I say that is because, um, you know, again, in helping other students and, and coaching business owners, um, a, a lot of people that are subjected to a lot of negativity in their life as they're growing up as kids, you know, maybe in broken families or, uh, you know, whatever the circumstances, um, those, you know, that does have an effect on you mentally and uh, it can uh, it can affect the way that you uh, I, I guess ultimately believe in yourself whether you believe you can or can't do something. There's there's when you've been influenced to that negative to that neg those negative um, thoughts and expressions that that sort of tends to perpetuate over the years. So that is one aspect. And you know my background was was fortunately very stable. So I've personally I've never had a problem with believing that I could do something. I've always had that positive um, thought process. Uh, but of course, if you don't have that, there are ways to learn that and adjust that. I mean, you mentioned Les Brown uh, and there are other people of that caliber uh, who can really help you through their books and audio programs and trainings to develop a positive mindset. T. Harv is a very good one. The Millionaire Mindset, great book to uh, dispel um, the, the kind of inappropriate um, thoughts about money that many people have that, you know, money in itself is bad. That's a very common one. Uh, so there, there, is a, there, is, there are strategic things that you can do to overcome that negative thought process. Uh, but I think the other part of it is um, just learning that, when you do take action, you don't need to understand everything 
beforehand in order to start the process. So, you know, I, I, I'm nothing special. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not an extraordinary character or different to anybody else. I think, you know, a lot of the things that we're talking about are lessons that I've learned over the years. And uh, one of those lessons is that simply taking some action on a new project really gets the momentum going. You know, the hardest thing always is making the decision to start something. Um, It's daunting. You know, it, it can create feelings of fear and trepidation. But the simple act of getting something going. So, you know, for example, if I think of a new project, one of the things that I'll do right away is do a quick bit of research on domain names, register a domain name, transfer that domain name to some hosting and get a simple site um, created, you know, often with wish list and WordPress, um, you know, as a, as a quick way of getting established. Because once I do that, all of a sudden it's become real. And the rest of the steps are just next steps. But as long as an, as long as an idea just is an idea in your head rather than, you know, in the physical space in reality, then it's, it's, a, it's in a different dynamic. You know, it's much harder to... Uh, obviously fulfill that. So I've, that's one of the things that I've found is taking just even a small action on a new business or a new project, and you can apply this to any aspect of life, it gets the momentum going. You've, you've started the process so that once that process is started, then you're just on to the next step. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when you're, you're talking about that, it, it, it makes me think back about a conversation that you and I had uh, many years ago when you said, hey, I'm uh, planning to start this online um, video show. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, back then, <laughs> it, was, it was very cutting edge. I think you yeah. started it in 2008. Is right, that correct? Right, right. Yeah. And so, I mean, you had no idea how big of a success that could have been at the, I'm sure you had to feel like, okay, this video stuff is getting big now and it's coming, but did you have any idea what it would ultimately turn uh, into? No, I mean, I, you know, and I, th- I think it's still early days, you know, in that whole world of online video. I mean, back then it definitely was blazing a trail. Um, but I think, I think, you know, ultimately I just, I felt positive about it. I felt like this was a trend and I also felt like, I had something that I could contribute to the world through this show because first of all, with my background in video production, I knew how to create something quality. And um, secondly, I saw that there was a gap in the market. You know, there was really wasn't that much in terms of um, uh, regular free business training um, that, you know, that, that was specialist to the topic of marketing and so for those reasons, you know, I, I felt, you know, this is something that I can do and develop. Uh, but, you know, I, I, yeah, I had no idea how much it would take off and, you know, over a hundred thousand viewers of the show now. Um, wow. you know, and I, I still think it's early days. I think that, <laughs> that we're seeing a tremendous uh, growth in this area of web TV and video podcasts, especially as the new, uh, I mean, basically all new TVs now have this capability of, uh, integrating uh, online videos, you know. So now, for the first time in history, you can choose to watch either traditional TV or an online video content, you know, web TV or video podcasts, as Apple calls them, side by side on a TV set. So it's it's transforming the way that people uh, consume their uh, their content, you know. And, and the interesting thing too about it is that um, people are tending to choose, you know, the early kind of stats are are showing that people are choosing the uh, online content on their TVs uh, in preference to traditional TV. And the reason is because these online shows are more niched. They're they're a closer match to people's interests than you could ever hope to see on traditional TV. So it's, it's definitely an interesting development. There's also the crossover now where you're able to publish 
and they can actually watch it on their uh, set top box now. Right. Yeah. The boxes just like the Roku and Apple. Um, the the uh, all all indications are that Apple is going more of the way of the Roku box, which has a lot more channels. Mm. And uh, I think that's an exciting development. Okay, Andrew, you just said uh, something there that really jumped out at me. You were talking about the fact that your show was free. And then uh, you've also talked about the fact that you have um, uh, four membership sites. So mm. kind of those things don't really stack up because sometimes people say, well, there's no way I'm going to do this if I'm not going to get paid for it. And mm. uh, one, one um, quick book recommendation, I'm sure you probably have already heard it. Um, I think it's called The Future of a New Radical Price. Free, it's called Free, The Future of a New Radical Price. Oh, yeah, no, I'm actually not familiar with that. I'll check it uh, out. I'll have to include some information on that. Yeah. But, um, so those things don't really match up in alignment. Like how are you doing free content but yeah. yet you also – have membership sites because most people say I'm not going to do anything any work unless I'm going to get paid right yeah no it's a good question um, for me um, the, you know around the time when I looked at starting that show the big thing online was was squeeze pages and if you're not familiar with the squeeze page what it means is um, it's it's a page that um, kind of teases you with the benefit of getting some content. But in order to do that, you have to enter your name and email address. Now, squeeze pages in themselves are not wrong. Um, I use uh, that type of page in my own business, opt-in boxes, you know, asking people for their name and email in return for some information. There's nothing wrong with that. However, at that time, what was happening was um, across the board, most businesses online that were sort of using or you know I'd say more of the leading edge of internet marketing <clears throat> um, they that's basically all they had so the, the what they were saying to people was um, okay I know that you found my site now but before I give you anything I'm going to ask you for your name and email address and I always felt that that was fundamentally wrong because you know from the visitor's perspective, well, I don't know you, you know, how do, how do I know that first of all, I can trust you? How do I know that your information is any good? And, you know, unlike the early days of the internet where it was exciting to get email, um, <laughs> we, we, even back then in 2008, we were at a point where uh, people are protective of their email address. You know, we, we, no one would, you know, no normal person says, I give me more email. I want a lot more email in my life. So, um, you know, it's, it's a big deal to ask someone for their email address. So my point is that looking at that kind of, you know, situation, I felt like that was the wrong way to approach it. I felt like if you give someone coming back to what we were talking about earlier, actually that principle, if you, if you give first and you make, sure that you give value, you, you give really good quality um, and the information that you give, if someone applies it, they can get a benefit in their life. They can get more customers. They can get higher profile, you know, whatever the benefits are that, of what you teach. And I believe that if you do that um, and then have some type of opt-in um, for something else, then it's the right way around for the relationship. You know, I'm, I basically say to people, I'm going to trust you first because I'm going to give you all of this good stuff and in the confidence that you'll resonate with it, you'll, you'll get to trust me and in return you'll come back and you know, you'll want more. And so that's it. You know, I kind of shifted the dynamic and uh, you know, since that time squeeze pages, they're still used, but they're not, you know, uh, it's kind of settled down a little bit more um, you know, a little bit more balanced but I still feel that this is the right way to do it. So there's no requirement for anybody to enter their name and email in order to watch my episodes for free. And, uh, you know, it served me well. So I guess to follow on from that, um, when people do come back, um, there's all kinds of services 
and online trainings that I can offer them on different topics like how to build a membership site, how to create your own web TV show, how to make money um, online, you know, how to promote your business, all these types of topics. And, um, you know, people, people by that time, they, they have a relationship with me. The no like, and trust factor that is essential in business is there. And, uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I have done well is because, you know, I, I start the relationship off on the right foot. That makes total sense. I was just writing a note down and uh, that's exactly what came to mind when you were talking about that was the fact that people ultimately want to know, like, and trust you. So you've done a huge um, uh, positioning situation with your television show and uh, your credibility factor goes way up. So consequently, it makes things, when you, when you talked about selling these uh, various courses that you've sold over the past few years, it probably makes it a lot easier for you to sell oh, them, absolutely. right? Oh, um, absolutely. So you, you talked earlier, Andrew, about the fact that you have four membership sites and you've had other ones in the past yeah. that you've sold them. Uh, so there's, there's uh, really very few people that have had as much uh, experience with membership sites as you, as you have. And so I know a lot of the people that we come into contact with because we're a software company and you mentioned you use wishlist member. Um, it's kind of their very first steps at mm. getting started with a membership site. And so, you know, they, uh, they have lots of questions, but one of the biggest questions that they, that they have or most common is how do I get new members? Mm. And it's just like, as soon as they, they think uh, it's just as easy as that, as soon as I build it, uh, you know, now I'm going to get new members. Yeah. So what, how would you answer that question? Well, there's many ways of getting new members. And, and, and uh, I think, you know, it's a good topic to discuss because um, a lot of people, falsely believe that uh the 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 problem is is a traffic problem and uh i've never felt that way it's if you think that you have a traffic problem you know getting traffic or visitors to your site um you need to adjust your mindset because really it's a conversion problem it's not difficult to get traffic these days because there are numerous paid and free methods to get traffic the, the issue is a conversion one because, um, you know, you can get all the traffic in the world, but if you can't convert those people to take the action that you want them to take, whether it's to join or to um, sign up for something or whatever it is, then, you know, that's, that's the fundamental issue. So, you know, to, to talk about how to get traffic, how to get visitors, there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, in terms of, excuse me, in terms of, um, uh, very effective methods. I think one of the the ways that's very effective right now is Facebook advertising. Um, it's very inexpensive for five or $10 a day. You can get very good results, you know, a steady stream of people visiting, um, your site and, um, remind me to come back to conversion in a minute because <clears throat> getting traffic, um, to a membership site is one thing, but obviously getting them to sign up is another thing. And I don't send traffic directly to the membership site. So we'll, we'll discuss that in a sec. Um, so, uh, Facebook ads are very effective because you can, you, first of all, they're inexpensive, but secondly, the ability to target a very specific demographic. So, you know, whether it's, um, recently engaged females under, 25, for example, you can target that specific exact demographic uh, so that your ad is shown to those people or whether it's um, people who are big fans of um, some particular movie uh, or, um, you know, I had a site, uh, one of my membership sites, actually, I don't know if you know this, but one of my membership sites that I created and sold uh, was on the home theater topic. And so again, Mm. You know, how to build and, and operate your own home theater and all the gadgets and technology and whatnot. Um, but again, you can target people that are specifically interested in that on Facebook. So it's the, the ability to target is very um, straightforward. And uh, actually, again, not many people know this, but Facebook themselves have a very helpful free 
training that can guide you through the process. It's uh, at facebook.com forward slash blueprint. And uh, that's a relatively recent development, but uh, you can you can really get up to speed quickly with how to do how to use that. So no need to feel intimidated or you know daunted about using Facebook. You can uh, use that free training that they provide. Um, some other methods <clears throat> of getting traffic: uh, little promotional videos on YouTube. You can get those created on Fiverr. Press releases um, are effective. Uh, doing a guest blog post on someone else's blog in a similar niche, um, getting banner ads on other related sites. Uh, there's a good site called buysellads.com, which it, it makes it very easy to uh, acquire ads on other people's sites, and you can do that instantly. Very, uh, very nice um, uh, method to do that. Uh, article marketing, writing articles and submitting them to article directories like ezinearticles.com, um, commenting on forums uh, on the same type of topic. And of course, you can usually add your signature in there. Uh, you can be interviewed on um, talk radio. Uh, blog talk radio is a popular one or other people's podcasts in a similar niche. And uh, of course, ultimately, once you get started, having a member referral program is really important having so having a system for members to refer other members that's really a no-brainer and that will get you a steady stream of new members too so there are lots and lots of different ways of getting the traffic but as I mentioned earlier it's more about making sure your conversion is right because it's not difficult to get traffic there's so many traffic sources <clears throat> That's uh, interesting when you start talking about Facebook traffic and mm. how crazy sophisticated the technology is oh, now. Yeah. I mean, I remember we, you know, there was a point in time when the only thing anybody ever really talked about was Google, Google right, ads. Right. Well, I mean, even before then, it was uh, Google get ranked as number one sure. in with the SEO. Yeah, obviously that was super complicated to do. Yep. You just couldn't do it on everything. You're like, hey, if you can't do that, you just buy. Yeah, and there's you, you buy. You mean you can buy only ads based on what they typed in. Yeah, and so now you got the, all the keywords, and now it's it's even gone beyond that. So that's pretty cool. You talked about uh, Facebook.com forward slash Blueprint. Um, it also triggered my thoughts that they also have a program. I believe it's called the Go program, mm. and it's completely free. And uh, you, you, they actually pair you up with somebody that will help you implement your ads. Oh, wow. And then once you get them going, then they pair you up with somebody different that will help you kind of tweak the conversion. And the only thing that you have to commit to is that you'll spend, I think, $25 per day for at least one month. Wow, and then as nice. long as you're spending $25 per day, you can stay in the program. Very so, good. Kind of Excellent. Cool. Yeah cool resource no reason um, not to do it yeah yeah definitely okay so Andrew you talked uh, about getting new members and you talked about uh, the traffic uh, but then this is the flip side of it with with membership programs once you once you have somebody that's a paying member how do you keep them because that's the second most co common question yeah uh, the retention aspect is important and you know over the years of having membership sites, it's something that I've um, analyzed. And, you know, initially I didn't know what I didn't know. And so, you know, you, you start losing members and you start trying to figure out why and um, also, you know, ask people why they left. And so through that process, I figured out that there's only really a number of reasons why people leave. First of all, um, someone simply just has a, a change of direction in their life. Um, you know, and so ultimately they're just, they've moved away from that topic and they're not interested in that topic anymore. Now, in that case, that's a very valid reason. There's nothing you're going to do to change that person because, you know, effectively they've moved on. So that's, you know, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does happen, you know, you, you accept that it's, it's fine. Um, the, the other reason or other two reasons are things that we can do something about. One is that, um, someone leaves because they simply feel overwhelmed. They, they feel like there's too much content. Um, they, they feel like they don't know what to do. They don't know where to start. 
And uh, in that situation, of course, it's not really that there's too much content because, you know, that's not a bad thing in itself to have too much. What they really mean is that they've sort of got paralysis by analysis. They, they just don't know what to do. And so the way that I fix that uh, very effectively is, first of all, when they first log in, to make sure that you welcome them with a very simple and straightforward message and, and preferably with a video that gives them a guided tour of the site so they can become familiar and comfortable with it. Remember, not everybody is as comfortable using the internet as we are. So, uh, you know, navigating the different menu items and showing them where to go for different aspects. And then secondly, um, showing them what to do first, whether it's a particular module <clears throat> or uh, you know, a particular part of the training that they should go to first. So, you know, your first step is to click on this and then follow this process. The other thing that you can do is uh, if you have a forum, which for a lot of membership sites makes sense, uh, is to ask them or invite them to introduce themselves in a specific category of the forum for that purpose. So, you, you know, spell it out for them. Your first step is to click up here where it says forum and scroll down to the area where it says forum introductions and just share with the community your name, uh, where you're from and uh, what you hope to get out of this site. And it's amazing what a difference that makes. Um, you know, that simple act and other members will go in there and they'll welcome them. And, you know, it's, it's a nice community and, you know, any paid membership site, the quality of the interaction is much better than a, pay, a, a public forum where the conversations tend to be very negative. So that, that simple process works wonders for member retention. And then the other, the other kind of um, reason why some people leave um, is because uh, they don't feel that there's enough value there for them. You know, it, it's, you know, they may say that it's about the price, but ultimately price is only an issue if they don't feel that there's value. You know, that's, that's the equation that people always make in their minds is, am I getting value for money? No. You know, then they may say that it's about the price, but ultimately it's about the, the, the value proposition. So if people tell you that, then you have to make changes. You have to um, either add more content or, you know, add other elements that make sure that the value is there. I mean, the other alternative is to drop the price, but um, you know, that's, that wouldn't be a recommended strategy because you, you know, you're, you're going to lose out. Uh, but simply making sure that the value is there by adding sufficient um, content or, you know, for example, one, one way to do that in many cases is to add more variety of media. Uh, I've been to some, student sites where, you know, it's really just a lot of articles, written articles, and I've encouraged them to leverage, uh, for example, YouTube videos that other people have spent, you know, days or weeks creating that you can embed on your site. And uh, members love that kind of content, you know, watching videos. So th there are ways to do it, but those fundamentally are the reasons why uh, someone would leave. And, uh, you know, those are some quick fixes to help you to um, minimize that. And uh, in terms of, you know, keeping track of it, you should keep track of the percentage of people that leave. And what I always say is if, if, you, if the percentage of members that leave is um, more than 3% uh, in any given period, you know, usually track it by a month or you may want to do it by a quarter. But if it's more than 3%, then you, there are, then that's something that you can work on. If it's less than 3%, then, you know, you've, you've got it about right because, you know, you can't win them all. Uh, you are going to get a certain number of people that, that wish to leave after a period. But uh, if, it's, if it's more than 3%, then there are things that you can do, as we discussed, to reduce that number. Well, you... you um gave out that tip about going into the forum and introducing themselves to the other people. And uh, the thoughts in my mind were, it's kind of like going to a party. And if yeah. you want to, if you want to meet some people, uh, you have to introduce yourself right. and, and stuff you like step that. Step outside your comfort zone a little. 
but the thing that's kind of cool with what you're talking about with the membership site is when you go to a party, it's typically a bunch of random people. And so you're kind of introducing yourself to find the people that you have stuff in common with. But when you're talking about a forum on a membership site, all these people already have kind of a common thread. So yeah, have you seen it really kind of flourish point. with that? Yeah, very good point. And, and uh, as I mentioned, what you find um, with a paid membership site is – this, the quality, the caliber of interaction is much better. And, um, you know, it's, it's actually, it's really cool to see others go in there and read the introductions and welcome them. You know, it's, yeah. it's a great thing. I mean, it doesn't, um, you know, I'm not involved in that process, but just the fact that they share this common interest, this mutual interest of the topic, it's, it's really nice to be able to see that. Yeah, one of the um, – I give uh, credit to my uh, former business partner, Stu McLaren. He always used to say, you know, people come for the content, but they stay for the community. So whatever you can do to keep people involved in the community, that's in your best interest. That's really true. I, I, it also brings to mind um, – I think it was Dan Kennedy that said that, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a crude analogy, but it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it makes the point – um, that people are, are walking around with their umbilical cords in hand, <laughs> looking for a place to plug it in. You know, what he's saying is, of course, that uh, people want to belong. You know, there is an innate need in all of us to belong. And of course, we all have different interests. We all have different passions and hobbies and so on. And so membership sites are these niche topics, whatever it is. And the community aspect of a membership site is a big reason why people join. They want to connect. And that's why, you know, it's not always appropriate to have a forum, but I would say in most cases it is uh, important to have a forum. And um, that's the reason why is because they love being able to share with each other and interact. You know, that's, that's the community. Absolutely. I want to go back and kind of clarify something that you said uh, because you gave a ton of tips on how you can clear up some of these problems once you actually know what they are. Yeah. And you said you simply ask them. Mm. So what, how, what does that look like, Andrew? I mean, when somebody says, okay, I want to leave, you know, you, you're you're saying, okay, well, we're going to cancel you. And, but yeah. you just you see, simply, is it as simple as well, just, uh, rarely will they email you to say that they want to leave. They just don't renew. And okay. so, um, it's important to have a system in place where you, uh, get notified of that. You know, I mean, there's, there's different ways to do that, but ultimately that's the principle is, um, even if it means you going in manually once a month to say, to look at the stats, to say, all right, which, which members, you know, didn't renew. Um, and uh, once you know that, then what I do is just email them and, you know, just a very friendly email to say, you know, I'm really sorry to see you go. Um, I always want to improve uh, what we do. You know, is there something that you feel that we could do better? And that's a nice way of phrasing it because it opens the door for them. You know, it's non-confrontational and um, most people will respond with, you know, a couple of sentences, you know, and usually they're very kind about it and they'll say, you know what, you know, I, you know, I'm, um, you know, I just felt like whatever it was, you know, I felt like um, I, I just, you know, didn't know how to really get the best out of the site or, you know, what it, they'll tell you the reasons why. And so that's, that's what I do is just send them an email. That's great. And I've found uh, in the many years that we've been doing this, you know, you will always have people that just won't respond, but yes, most yeah. of the people, they really do want to help you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, if you phrase exactly it in a nice way like that, um, people, you know, who could take offense at such a nice uh, yeah. comment. Well, Andrew, I uh, appreciate your time. I know we've, we've covered a lot of stuff and I wanted to follow up with one final question uh, because you have been doing this uh, for so long. You have so much experience. Uh, what is one thing that you wish you knew uh, that you know now that you wish you knew back when you were getting started? That's a good question. Um, as far as 
the aspect of of um, membership sites goes, I th- I think just being just experiencing the um, amazing results of having this re- residual recurring income um, happen. You know, I, it, it, there was a gap. I mean, you know, I I, <laughs> I said earlier that I you know I embraced that the concept and I did. And I knew that that's what I wanted to do. But, you know, in all truthfulness, there there was a time in between where, you know, I didn't take action. And so I think that the thing that I wish I'd realized earlier was to, the faster you implement this process of building your membership site and, you know, start to get traffic and start to build the community and so on, the faster you're going to see the results and, and the amazing power of recurring income because you know so many people struggle these days with uh you know their finances and um you know it's 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 no reflection on themselves as as people um it's just simply you know not having the right strategy or the right systems in place and so uh for me i just wish i'd done it earlier you know because uh having the money come in regularly you know, on the first of the month or whenever that time is um, for work that I did way back uh, in setting up the site because, you know, now now that it's set up, it's in a maintenance phase. uh, It's a beautiful thing. And, uh, you know, it is, there is effort involved to start it off. And, you know, it may feel like you're climbing a mountain to begin with with all the things that need to be done to set up a site. But it's a system, it's a process, you know, with your training, people just follow the steps, get the site created. And then from that point onwards, everything is so much easier. You know, I liken it to pushing a big boulder up a hill Mm. and most people stop before they get to the top of the hill. And consequently, you know, the boulder falls back on them and crushes them. And, you know, they fall way back to where they started. Sorry to be graphic, but uh, if if you push through, you know, if you if you go through the the tougher times and the challenges, and you know, learn these new skills, once you reach the top of the hill, and you have that wonderful thing of you know coasting down the other side, and that's what it's like once the site is set up and running, because you're then in the maintenance mode of you know adding new content, and it's so much easier, and your time um, uh, allotment is a lot less. So, yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, I wish I'd done it earlier. That's the thing that I would say. Yeah. Well, that is great, Andrew. I really appreciate your time. And uh, as we wrap this up, what, you know, we talked about your uh, TV show. And what is the best uh, way for somebody to learn more about you? Is it uh, helpmybusiness.com? Yeah, thanks. I, I invite everybody to um, to come and watch the show. Um, I'm really proud of it. It's at helpmybusiness.com. Like I said, it's free to watch. Although, you know, I obviously invite you to, um, be able to put your name and email address once you watch a show and you like it so that you can get updates about the next episodes. And, uh, basically what the show is, is all about is it's for small business owners and entrepreneurs who realize the importance of marketing of effective marketing to build a better business. And what I do on the show is I show you lots of different methods and strategies that are proven to work. I show you case studies. Um, you can write in with your questions. And uh, basically, I try and have fun with it. Ultimately, you know, I, I try and make what can be quite a serious uh, topic engaging and fun. And, um, you know, that's it, basically. So yeah, come and check it out. And I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, I've, I uh, give you 100% endorsement. I, I've watched a whole bunch of the shows and I love how you kind of make uh, make it just fun, exactly like what you said. So again, it's helpmybusiness.com and uh, this is Andrew Locke. And Andrew, uh, I certainly do appreciate uh, your time with us because I'm excited about what we just covered because I really think it's going to help a lot of people yeah, uh, take action. I hope so. It's, it's a fun topic to talk about and um you know, I think hopefully people can see that we're both passionate about membership sites and, uh, you know, just encourage everybody to, to really get going and take action and start the process and then, you know, just follow along the steps. All right. Thanks again, Andrew. Appreciate it. You're welcome.